Aloha, and welcome to the Matrix of Peace show produced by Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Phyllis Bleese, and I'm also the CEO of Peace Through Commerce. Our guest today is calling in from a city very near Tel Aviv in Israel. Her name is Iris Sade Rosler, and she is an organizational consultant uh, who works with practical, hands-on, conscious leadership practices. We are discussing the applied conscious leader practices with an emphasis on the on resilience, listening, and empathy. So with that, we'll welcome you. Aloha, Iris. Shalom, Phyllis. Well, thank you. Uh, Iris, you have had quite a long career as an organizational consultant, and I wonder if you could take us back a little bit and tell us what got you into this space and, and let us know what you actually, how you define and what you think about conscious leadership. Well, I, I think my purpose is to help you leaders be the best versions of themselves, mainly in their working place. Um, we spent many hours, we spend many hours at work all our life, uh, either if we work for someone or we work for ourselves, it doesn't really matter. And we might as well do the best out of it. And uh, when, when I help the leaders, I noticed during time that I I use, well, they use their senses, and I do too. And I help them uh, be the best version of themselves through their senses. And um, we will talk a little bit about the book I wrote, the book I wrote a chapter in, You Empath You. And uh, one of my first memories is uh, just hanging on the trees, climbing <laughs> on trees and uh, my legs up and my uh, head down. And I, I try to do it in yoga right now, but it doesn't really work. Uh -huh. uh, but the feeling, the sensation of being upside down, seeing the world upside down, feeling uh, the sun in my eyes and the wind on me, uh, this for me is is the feeling that I want to have in my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I want to help people have the feeling that they want to have in their lives uh, and, and combine it with the work. I, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that I explain myself well, <laughs> but yes. just ask and I'll answer. <laughs> yes, well, you are. So what, what I'm hearing is that from a young age, and we saw a picture of you out on the ledge from a hike you were on, and that is <laughs> Well, yeah, that is Israel. And I put this picture in one of my presentations uh, because um, I had uh, an interview for a news, an Israeli newspaper a few years back for International Women's Day. Uh, so the reporter was asking me, uh, inside you, what, what are you? So I said, I'm, I'm, I'm a facilitator in the Girl Scouts. And this is a picture when I when I was a, a group facilitator for the for the for the scouts in Israel when I was I don't know sixteen years old. So oh. uh, my children call me uh, Girl Scouts uh, coach, <laughs> <laughs> and this is what I do actually. <laughs> yes. So what I what I hear, and I think there's a story you might be sharing with us that shows up in the book there on that's in it's in Hebrew. Uh, but that your empathic self, or uh, you'll, you'll you you that. that's the name of the book. Yeah, and mm -hmm. what what I'm what I'm gathering from you is that when you came into the world of business and leadership yourself as an organizational consultant, that you have brought along a uh, a dimension to leadership training that includes the senses and that 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 and and if you could just let the audience know who are some of these clients of yours and what areas are we looking at we're, as i understand it we're looking at high level ceos and across all sectors but tell us about 
who you're working with, if you could, uh, bringing a whole different style of coaching into their life? Uh, yeah, it's true. Um, I, I came to it by mistake, like all good things happen, you know, um, because I, I was, I, I studied leadership and I studied group facilitation and all the regular stuff that you study in university. And I did workshops, uh, um, for team building and all kinds of things that, well, the regular stuff that, that is good. And then I noticed, and this is from writing this chapter in the book. Um, when, um, when the editor interviewed me for the, for this chapter, and I'm just reading just, uh, two sentences. Uh, she asked me, what, what are you doing? So I said, I'm a mentor. And what do you do as a mentor? I enable leaders to be the best version of themselves using their senses. Uh, so, and she asked me, how do you do it? So I said, I help them connect to their bodies, to their souls and then to their career and purpose. I work mostly outdoors and in groups. Uh, so I noticed that this is what I do and I just wrote it down. Um, so you wanted examples, okay? Um, yes, but yes. So you were saying, and just before the show got started, we were saying that right behind you is one of the places and the spaces that you have done your consulting and organizational work. Tell us, what are we seeing there? Well, we are seeing uh, a nature resort. It's a really big nature resort. Uh, and it's called a biblical nature resort in Israel. It's the only one in Israel. I think it's the only one in the world. And uh, I do there many uh, outdoor workshops for leaders, mm -hmm. uh, mostly governmental uh, leaders, like uh, officers in the army, officers in the police force, uh, but not only municipalities and uh women we have a really nice uh women's uh leadership training over there and what we do is just we do stuff like we can uh there is a herd of sheep this is the place where the sheep goes uh -huh. so they tried they try to lead the, sh the sheep and and if you uh read the bible then you see that most of the leaders, the biblical leaders, were shepherds. And yes, then they became yes. leaders for, for people. First of all, they, they studied how to lead uh, the herd. And then they studied how to lead the herd of people. Yes. Uh, that's, so that's, that, that's what they do. And they can't do it. They can't lead anything. And there are a bunch of people trying to take some... I don't know, maybe 20 sheep. And when, when it's a professional shepherd, it's one person over maybe 50 or 60 uh, sheep. So this is the one, but there are a lot of uh, things that we do over there. We just uh, do stuff, outdoor training, you know, do stuff and then study from it about their own leadership. And well, you know, course, yeah, well, you know, um, when ever, would what you have to say to somebody to lead them matter less than when they're sheep? So uh, it, it was you're, you. Have, <laughs> you've moved into the senses, and maybe you could take us there too. Maybe tell us a little bit about these the senses of leadership. And I know you brought your own proprietary work and combined it to other work. But let's take a look. I think we have a slide here too. We just give. The audience is a gestalt of what we'll be covering a little bit today, and then you can help us go through a practice. So what are we seeing? We're seeing all the senses and, of course, the sixth sense, which which I called intuition. I took intuition out of the sixth sense, but it can it it has a lot of stuff in it. And I just gathered many, many things that are connected to the senses and that uh, can help people uh improve their leadership it's really hands-on uh like if we talk about uh smell just for example and as you know we talked about it before smell is the primary sense it's a sense that is very um connected even to animals in a good way because it's it it senses directly 
to a place that we were very, very young and 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 very um not mature in a good way. Mm. What do I mean? Like if I ask someone, okay, what is the first smell that you remember? Most of the time it will be something from either from his grandmother's house, his mother's house, um, flowers in the fields where he grew up. Uh, so it could be a very, very, it will, it will send him to a very primary uh, place. So stop right. So stop just a minute, because I think you're going to take us through a practice. The practice is hands on, and okay. uh, for for those of us who are who are uh, listening to us at home, uh, just you can you can pause right now after hearing the instructions, and take some time and close your eyes. And when when you close your eyes, imagine a feeling, a sensation, a picture. Something from your childhood when you felt really good, when you felt the best time of your life. And feel this moment in your body. And then pay, pay attention to the senses, pay attention to the smell, pay attention to what you're seeing, pay attention to what you're hearing, pay attention if it feels somewhere in your body and i'm not saying any places because i don't want to give you any ideas pay attention to what you what you feel in in your touch do you feel something touching you and and once you you felt everything about it just open your eyes slowly and write it down for yourself <laughs> Are you going to write it down? Well, I am just because I want I I I believe in you and I want to, <laughs> and I know I'm going to refer to it later. So yes, I wrote it down. Okay. Um, so let's let's work with it right now and then go back to to the senses because I think giving an example helps people understand what is it that you when you work with the senses. Mm -hmm. Uh so Phyllis, do you want to share? Yes. So I grew up in Southern California and I think I was happiest at the beach. And I, and it, you took me, when I closed my eyes first, I could feel the sand. I could smell the salt water. I can smell that even before the family got to the coastline, we could start smelling it coming in through the car. Even if I wasn't tall enough to see out the windows, I'd say, oh, daddy, we're near the beach, we're near the beach because I could smell the salt water. And then we get there and you know, that's just so different. Barefoot, running in the sand, plunging into the water and then the water's cold and salty. And and the so salt, sensation of cold, sand and water on my skin. Uh, and then in terms of hearing, uh, uh, in addition to the waves, which are overwhelming, there's, I could hear laughter of other children. There's some. There was such an innocence to what I heard that that calms me to this day. Somebody did something called it's something HDMR or something MDR. There was that. Yeah, it's a it's a kind of post trauma thing. That, that's it's, right. It's a method. Yes, that's right. And I remember they that uh, there too hearing children laugh on a beach you don't know them but you're with them that the sort of laughter that you hear coming in a playground or from a beach is so wild and safe and fun it, it relaxes my whole body and i felt it in my stomach but i also felt it all over my skin uh and i guess the heat so that's what mm -hmm. i'll do for me so thank you thank you for um doing this for me with me and for me, because it, uh, the sensation came back to me. It's like a boomerang. You, you give, you give it to me and then it comes, it, it comes back to you. Uh, and, and I can see your face and it's the, your face is so excited right now and emotional in a good way. Um, and, and, and you were talking about 
I think all the senses actually. And, uh, and I'm, I'm, and I, I'm taking, you were talking about feeling the sand, smelling the, uh, the beach, uh, feeling the sun on your face and hearing the, the laughter and, uh, and, 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 and smells and, and maybe not taste, but maybe the taste of salt when you get into the water. I'm not sure. I don't want to put things in your mouth. Uh, and, 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 and we're giving this example. Uh, of of how you can work with leaders uh, talking about senses, because once you want to calm yourself and once you want to get into this balanced situation, you know what you do. You go into water, mm. you go to the beach, you go to a sunny place, you go to places where, where, where you hear laughter of children. It's it's easier than we think. And, and this is working with uh, childhood memories, which are nice and good, but sometimes, sometimes it's not even childhood memories. It's just other memories or just other sensations that are connected to, to the senses. And the senses are connected so, so uh, deeply. Um, and 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 you can work with it. You can work with it. I'll, I can give another example. It's an example from from a book. You want to be very uh, tough in a meeting. Then you touch tough things. You go you go barefoot on a ground that is really harsh. But if you want to be uh, softer, then you walk on sand, like you mm -hmm. said. Mm. And so this is not me. This is research. Actually, mm -hmm. when when sometimes I bring research to this, and uh, and 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 working with the senses, it's it's amazing. It's amazing. So you know, you remind me that visualization. I've heard that uh, uh, athletes, you know, the people who are in high competition. Uh, meets or individual athletes, they apparently they visualize themselves going over the high bar or yeah. doing the perfect basket. And that, and I'm sure that is, that's been game changing for elite athletes who just get the extra half second in, in a marathon. But, or and maybe better than but, and if we went in and touched, tasted, smelled those those properties in life around us that recreate that event or that image of the future, it it, it wouldn't maybe it would engage all parts of the body to actually be there in the moment. And that's I don't think leaders are taught to do that, or or even you know somebody trying to pass a test. Uh, walk into the first day of, of a job or resign from a job. All of those things you want to have it, turn, the way you imagine it turning out, you could also taste it, smell it, feel it, hear it turning out. Yeah. That's uh, sometimes, sometimes I ask people, most of the time I ask people, like I'm, I'm asking them to tell me some uh, crisis story. Because this is part of managing your own leadership, being a conscious leader. So something that happened to you that was a crisis that you overcome through or not, whatever. And then I ask them, I ask them, where where did you feel it in your body? Mm. When you were really in this bad moment, where did you feel it in your body? Mm. Uh, so I know for me, it's mostly in the stomach. When I'm like in a bad place, I feel it in the stomach, but many people like feel it here. They can't breathe right. Like in this chakra in, in, in the, in the throat or in their shoulders or the back. Uh, but once you know, you are aware of, or of what happens to you when you get into a bad place, then you know that you got into a bad place because oh. you feel it. Before, before you even analyze it, early warning system. Yeah, early more early warning system. Really, yes. Oh, and then you're more conscious as a leader because you know, even if you didn't think you were triggered, 
you you know you consciously that you have been and therefore you don't you don't lose your sense of self you don't fly off the handle you don't say things you regret you might but but as you as you were saying this consciousness of the way you're showing up as a leader is different than just showing up as a leader exactly and uh phyllis and i met through shakti leadership and we were talking a lot about shakti leadership and which is well i guess the same as conscious leadership and uh um being a conscious leader is is first of all what we what we called in shakti leadership the step in mm -hmm. knowing yourself mm -hmm. knowing yourself and and the step up is being a leader uh, mm -hmm. so it's i guess it's step in and step up and step out uh yes. doing what you're doing as a leader it's it's all the steps but uh looking at it in a different way of of consciousness through your own senses um i have another example actually uh, you know what hold your thought because i want to connect the dots here to the matrix of peace so oh okay this, sure sure as a, as a peace building problem solving model we are we teach at peace through commerce from this model called the matrix of peace and we'll show you the version of the model so when i had the author of shakti leadership neely mabat on the show with me we used this slide and we called it we called the matrix model the soil of peace and we called the people you me those of us who acquire a more conscious way of being in leadership the seeds of peace but the seeds of peace need to have uh, need a safe place to operate and what this model shows is this is a just a a, a venn diagram but it's of a society and in the next slide you can see that it is any diagram it's made up of the three basic circles the public private and civil society sectors uh, and in our work we know that to co-create ecosystem peace we need the necessary but sufficient conditions of justice and prosperity and sustainability, which is not just green, but it's also actions and sustainable relationships in the workplace or at home. And we know that in from a societal management standpoint, that it takes cooperation of each of the sectors of society working together inter relationally interdisciplinarily to co-create these conditions and when they all three are there then then they support ecosystem peace sustainable peace which is the superordinate intersection of this basic venn diagram but what we have added and what we're talking about today what whole, so on the next slide we can we show when you have fragile states or very um very undeveloped states though they often don't have really healthy operating sectors at all and they need help they need these consciousness values your practices like resilience listening and empathy which is which is at, go to the heart of what you teach people when people can step into those practices the next slide shows that it with the those are consciousness practices and they move the people from outside sector behavior into, into the intersections of justice, prosperity, and sustainability from a societal modeling standpoint. So this whole show, it, it really is focused on your contribution to creating in the world conscious leaders who are accessing resilience listening and empathy and the all six senses to navigate out of sector silo behavior me versus them into intersectionality behavior by reducing their fear reducing their their well fear anger hate i would say managing their fear oh there you go it redu not just fear is a good thing but if yes, you manage it yes. yes if you manage it then then you're in charge and it isn't in charge of you and, yeah, and it's managing the anger and managing uh um i don't know frustration 
mm -hmm. as a leader. Imagine it managing yourself. So does this set you up for one more example? Or do you want, is there something that, I think there is another discipline that you use called the basic pH model. I don't yeah, know. but I don't think, uh, I, I don't think people to... could read about it. It's, uh, it's, it's too, uh, it's too fast yeah. to talk about it. Yeah, and we did show the slide if people want to stop the show and just look at who, mm -hmm. who developed it and then they can go look that up because that's important. But share it your is. story. Can you share your story in six thirty seconds? <laughs> well, it's 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 just it's a short example. Of this leader I've been working with, as you know, Israel is not in a good situation right now, and uh, we talk. We we say that we do uh, war life balance, not work life balance. Oh. Uh, this is what we work with people, and he and he tells me that this uh, he has a person working for him. Every time this person goes into the room. He just wants to yell, yell at him mm. because I don't know, he doesn't, they don't, they don't match. So I tell him, where do you feel it? So he tells me, I feel it here in the, in, the, in my stomach, but not in my stomach connected to my heart. Okay. So I tell him every time you feel it, just breathe, breathe into it. Oh, oh. And, and I think this is a good example because it's, it's very human to feel like that i agree oh thank you so much for just leaving that practice with us today we'll have to leave it there and i want to let the audience know that you have been watching the matrix of peace show produced by think tech hawaii i'm your host phyllis bleese and ceo of peace through commerce we've been discussing applied conscious leadership practices with emphasis on the practices of resilience, listening, and empathy with our guest, Iris Sade Rosler. Mahalo, Iris, for joining us. Shalom from Israel. And mahalo to you, our viewers, for tuning in. Aloha.